Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday, hope you're doing well. We have a fantastic show planned for you today, so let's get this party started. Okay, today's project comes from my good friend Brian O'Hare, and you know Brian from being on the show quite often. Brian brought this axe by, uh, dropped it off, and, and this is a what's called a double bit axe, meaning it has two heads. Now, um, I've taught uh, axemanship to uh, hundreds of scouts over the years, and uh, I have a, a great collection of axes. However, um, it's it, it's a primitive tool, and it's not, you wouldn't really, today it's good for splitting wood, but basically you're not going to use this to chop trees down, things like that, And whereas years ago that was a common thing. Uh, however... Uh, there are a lot of axe collectors out there, and there are there were hundreds and hundreds of different patterns or designs of different axes. And here's just a few that I have from one of my older books that shows the different types of axe heads they had, the different kind of patterns, the different styles, the different weights. So, I mean, if you're a collector or somebody that uh, is into axes, there's a lot out there for you to interest you. Um... This particular type of axe that we're going to be dealing with today is known as a double bit axe. And it was used a lot because it had two edges and it was used a lot, especially in the Pacific Northwest. We had a lot of pine, cedar, softer woods. Um, you know, if, if you get one of the uh, edges got a little dull, you could flip around, use the other side. That's basically what it was. And I never liked in scouts. We never use this type. It's kind of, you know, it's more dangerous than the other type. You got twice the cutting surfaces on there so we never use these really in scouts but um and i've used them upstate and things like that i i pre prefer a single bit axe which would look like that this one here is uh, is a plum victory now if you see it uh, let me get i'm sorry let me show you here can you see that plum victory now what that was the plum victory was a, a it was made in the end of world war ii and basically what it was was uh it was a a lesser grade believe it or not it's like you ever hear of a war finish like king dick when they put out their war finish or something that meant that manufacturers they were pumping these things out so quick that they didn't go and polish them out and things like that they just put a basic grind on them and sent them out and it was still good steel still had the right pattern but it wasn't fit and finish wasn't up to standards of consumer grade standards so that's what the victory line was and uh like i said so this dates back to somewhere in the 40s you know right around mid world war ii and after and again but this one here was you know gone over somebody you know did a little bit but we're going to try and clean this up the handle we're going to try and save the handle although it has a couple chips and things like that. We'll work on that. What I don't like, uh, what I uh, this handle, it's, it seems like this uh, neck is a little bit long. We'll shorten that up. Um, we're going to pop this out. Like I said, try and reuse the handle, clean up the axe, and uh, let's see what we can do. We got to keep that plumb victory. Now, even though I'm not crazy about this style of axe, I do like the fact that it's a lighter weight axe. You can see got a nice profile to it. It's a lightweight uh, double bit axe. I have some of these that are heavier, which just, and the longer handle gives us a good swing speed. Now, when I was doing this uh, last week, somebody was saying that these are great. These uh, slap or slide hammers are great for pulling wedges. And I've never used it for that. But they said they're great for pulling wedges out of uh, axe or or hammer handle so we'll try that and see how that works so let's give that a shot now here we'll drill a small hole into the wedge itself and then we'll screw in the slide hammer and see if we can't pull that out wow <laughs> i gotta tell you i wasn't sure if that would work holy cow does that work good very impressed. So thank you to the subscribers that mentioned using this method for pulling out the wedge. That wedge was split down the middle. I'm going to try it on this side now. We go again. We drilled a small hole there. Screw in the, the uh, slide hammer here until it bottoms, gets pretty much bottomed out. And then we'll slide this weight up. 
Oh my God. That is just phenomenal. So that's how you pull a wedge out using a slide hammer. How great is that? I love you subscribers. Now I'm using just a, a modified uh, punch that I made, you know, just a flat bottom punch to knock out the handle because I have the handle floating. It's holding the head in the Stanley 700 vise. And we'll just... That's how easy that handle comes out when you knock it out that way. Okay, there we go. That was very enjoyable because, you know, using the right tools and whatnot. Now, what we have here is, uh, we'll have to reprofile this a little bit. You can see it's a little dinged up or whatever. We'll do the edges, we'll reprofile them. And we have some dings and whatnot. We're not gonna go deep enough to get some of these out because they're very deep, but we just wanna clean this up. We'll get a lot of this out. Axes are very hard. The, the steel is extremely hard, especially towards the edge. So you might think this is real easy with a normal tool that would grind right out. But with an ax, you know, that's that's hard stuff. So again, we're just trying to make this into a presentable, just a user ax. So let's get to that. Now, this is the difference between a 40 grit flap disc, just a 40 grit, and what it was before. You see the difference and how quickly the flap disc can get under all that gunk. Okay, now that we have the head approximately where we want it, we just got to wax and stuff, but it looks good. Now what we want to do is we want to get the handle. Remember, we want to lower it down a little bit on the shaft because we thought too much of a cheek was showing. And you can see where the, uh, the axe head was bottoming out. So what we got to do is we got to uh, take this to the belt sander, smooth it out a little bit so the axe will travel down a little bit further instead of hitting this ledge. And we lowered this uh, kerf cut a little bit and uh, then we should have once we have that we can cut that off but i want it just down a little bit and remember this one here it's got a little damage but we're going to try and just sand this down a little bit make it look nice okay we took out all the dings and dents and you know little imperfections we sanded it all on the belt sand it looks nice now let's put the head on now you want to drive the head down onto the handle. Remember, this has to come out so that it wedges that this can't go down any further. Now, you know, you're getting close. You see the curling, you see the curling of the wood here. That means it's starting to grip the outside. So what you want to do is you're going to take a utility knife. This is always an enjoyable operation. And you're going to cut off those curls. Okay, so that this can travel down a little bit further. And you're going to keep going down until, you see that? The curls come right off like that. We're going to keep cutting this until we get it down so it can't go anymore. To do that, you put a block of wood on the floor and you could slam the handle down this way, you know, on the, the bottom of the handle like this until it comes down. Or you could take a dead blow hammer, like my buddy Ben, the tool addict, sent me, this one here. And you can nail the bottom of the, ha of the handle so that this will come up through momentum. But uh, just keep doing it, and then we'll insert the wedge, put a little stain on it, and see how it looks. Okay, we're going to make a uh, sheath now. I want to make a sheath for that axe, and uh, I'm up here at the leatherworking station in my attic, and it's been a long time since I did any leatherwork, and, and it's not a difficult uh, hobby, leatherwork, but there is some things you have to follow and, and do, and if you're not, if you're like me, you're out of practice, it takes a while to get back in practice. The first thing you want to do is make a pattern. And usually you make that out of cardboard. And this is the pattern I want to have. I want to have one sheath on each bit, which, which is each side of the axe. So I cut this out of cardboard. Now, this is going to look like this here. And that's going to go around. And then this will flap over with a, a, a snap. The thing is that um, you don't want to... You'd rather have a doubler. This is called a doubler. It's a small piece of leather that you cut and you put in here like this. And that's so that the blade of the axe will touch the doubler and not uh, the rivets or the thread if you're going to sew it, whatever. So it's going to look like that when it's finished. So when you do that, you bring it upstairs and then you cut out your leather like this. And there we have it. It's cut out. You can see there's the doublers. 
This is what it's going to look like. Now, I'm using a very thick leather. Um, it, the leather goes by ounces, but that translates into thickness. The uh, lower the ounce, like a two-ounce leather, is very thin, whereas a seven- or eight-ounce leather is, much, is maybe an eighth of an inch, you know, thick. Uh, this here, you can see the thickness of this leather here. Uh, this is actually pretty thick, and that's uh, about just between nine and ten-ounce leather. So it's a nice, heavy leather. Funny thing is, I paid a lot of money for this leather because, you know, being a vegetarian or something, it goes against my grain to have animals slaughtered for their skin. So uh, this leather is actually from cows that died naturally through lightning strikes or old age, things like that. That is, uh, and it's, you, you can only find it a few places, but that's, uh, I got a, actually almost like a whole cow worth of leather that died naturally. So anyway, uh, here it is. Now I'm going to uh, glue this up. We got to glue it down. And then from there, we're not going to sew. We're just going to put some rivets in here and, uh, and then stain it, whatever. And we'll see if we can get that going. But to cut leather, it's much harder than it looks. A lot of times you think cutting leather, you say, well, like, for example, if you tried to use a scissor, here's a uh, shears, a good sharp shears, right? You, it, it will not cut. You see what I mean? It's very hard to cut. And all you're going to wind up doing is actually, you know, dulling your shears. So when you want to cut leather, you need, and that's why leather workers go through a lot of exact um, new blades because you have to have a sharp blade. Sometimes you have to make a couple passes to get that to cut through. You see, like that. And you always use a uh, a backer uh, self healing. This is a you know like a polyethylene sheet, so it don't dull your blades. But you have to go a couple times sometimes to get through that piece of leather. And you'll see it's not easy to cut leather, especially this thick stuff. So that's where trouble. Real leather work is use what's called a half moon life. Or this is a, uh, uh, this is a uh, Stolman, Al Stolman made this. And it's a beautiful, they're expensive if you see one of these. And they're super sharp. You keep these really sharp. And with these, you can cut two ways. You cut with the edge like this. You go forward. You see how I'm cutting it with the edge? And that's how these cut. And what's nice about these is you could rock the knife and get a nice sharp cut like that. And you can see how that looks. So if you had small pieces like this that you want to cut, you just rock it like that. And, you know, you can cut those pieces. That's what leather work is used when they do their leather work. Now, normally I show you the before and uh, describe the after, but today I want to do something different. I want you to be the judge of what you think, how this project came out. Okay, so special thanks to Brian O'Hare for that great project, and it uh, really came out well. Very happy with it. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.